Elwood Jones should be dead right now. He has been awaiting execution for nearly three decades, but years of appeals has kept his execution off the state's calendar. His execution has been rescheduled time and again, yet he has continued to maintain his innocence. I asked myself, how did I get here? How did I get here? And they offered a deal. I guess you, they offered a couple of deals, you know, manslaughter. For what? Why would I plead guilty to murder? I ain't killed nobody. Jones is now 70 years old and has been on Ohio's death row since 1996 after a jury found him guilty in the beating death of a New Jersey grandmother who traveled to Blue Ash, Ohio for a bar mitzvah. A former Blue Ash Hotel employee is sentenced to death after he was convicted of murdering a hotel guest. Judge Ralph Winkler agreed with the jury and ordered the death penalty for Elwood Jones. Jones was convicted of the 1994 murder and robbery of 67-year-old Rhoda Nathan. There were no eyewitnesses to the crime, and Jones maintained his innocence to the end. And I'm still innocent, Your Honor. I did not commit this crime. Judge Winkler said he reviewed all the evidence and was in agreement with the jury's recommendation of the death penalty. The execution date was set for September, but of course the sentence will automatically be appealed. I honestly thought at the end that uh, I was going to be vindicated. I, I truly did when they come back and they asked me that, that, uh, well, how you feel now? And, and my words are still the same today. I'm still this. I ain't do Rhoda Nathan was found lifeless in her hotel room. Authorities first thought she had suffered a heart attack. An autopsy quickly showed otherwise. Nathan's death was ruled a homicide. Later on that day, and uh, it was still speculation that she had failed and uh, had a heart attack. And then later, uh, when they interviewed me, around 11.30 or 12, only they asked me what did I do that day, I told them. And uh, they didn't say it was in serious, they just interviewed every em employee about their whereabouts and what happened that day. What did you see? And I told them I was on the comp breakfast working when it happened. Jones wasn't immediately on detectives' radar, at least no more than the other dozen-plus hotel workers they'd soon be interviewing. It wasn't until he went to the hospital with an infected cut on his hand that he became the prime suspect. And when I got to the station, the Blue Air station, with him, the questions they asked me say uh, about my hand and all said, I punched somebody. So I ain't punched nobody. And I explained to him exactly how I injured my hand. And then we went through that for a while, and they got up and left out of the room. And they come back and they asked me, uh, I said, oh, Jonesy, Jonesy. And I uh, asked myself, first, my name's not Jonesy. And uh, once I said that, and they, uh, I said, are you accusing me of something? And he said, did the shoe fit? I said, this conversation is over. Nine days after the murder, a Blue Ash police officer conducted a warrant search on Jones's car. With no other witness or law enforcement officer present, the officer found a pendant from a necklace in the toolbox. The pendant belonged to Nathan. Jones was convicted of murder and sentenced to death row. Prosecutors are adamant that he deserves to be there. Elwood was just just the kind of guy you see in the street. He was just flat, a mean, there's, I don't know how anybody could care for him at all. He was just a mean individual. Just disrespectful to the judge, to the jurors, just not to have strong feelings about him. He is just a despicable human being. Again, I've had serial killers that don't, that I don't feel that strong as I do about Elwood Jones. He was just mean. Well. Mr. Pete Ma, <laughs> he has some harsh words for me, but him, Dieters, and all, but if you go back all the years, I've had plenty of run-ins with him, and uh, at the end of the day, 
So I understand he's doing his job. But this is one he didn't do a good job on. Aaron Barnhart, who is now serving as Jones's lawyer, says he deserves a new day in court. You know, he tells me he's innocent. He's always maintained his innocence throughout. I start looking through the, you know, the files, all the pleadings and everything. And there was a lot of evidence at trial that um, I don't find very compelling. Um, junk science or just incorrect science. Um, or there were just sort of like circumstantial allegations that like, were not unique to Elwood. They applied to like everyone in the hotel, you know, workers, guests, or whatever. So, and there's there's no, you know, forensics evidence. There's no fingerprints. There's no, you know, witnesses. Nothing like that. So the only thing that stands out from that is this pendant that um, was that the police said they found in Elwood's trunk of his car that looks a lot like the one um, that the victim always wore their photographs. And there's some dispute as to if it is this one unique pendant or whether it you know, was um, purchased at a jewelry store. But like, the point is, Elwood doesn't have any explanation for having that pendant. So it came down to, if Elwood is innocent, then that pendant was planted. The conclusive piece of evidence there was this pendant in her, which at first we thought it might have just been costume jewelry. Then we find out from her family that her husband had had that custom made for her. So it was a one of a kind piece of jewelry that's in his toolbox. So to me, it's a pretty compelling case. The point of what I'm trying to get you to see is that I thought eventually this would just blow over and I'd go on with my life pick the pieces back up. But obviously it didn't. <laughs> and so, what am I supposed to do? Jones is now scheduled for a hearing where his counsel must convince a judge that the trial leading to his conviction was flawed. The outcome of the hearing could determine whether Jones gets the one thing he's requested all along, a new trial.